He said, tell them, as much as your desire is for them to operate in the shoes I've given to you, he said, how many of them can say they will now? A number can, but the fact is that you do not recognize that you can. Because apostle is still among you in the physical body, had it been that apostle was just taken out by the Lord, then something will wake up in many of you. But as much as the work is still at hand, apostle will still remain until the work is finished. So therefore, the heart of each one of you should be, apostle is not here, I'm the one in charge. And when you have such heart that apostle is not here, it's my turn, then you will enter into the flow. Let me tell you this. Can a blind man know his way out? No. Can a deaf man hear when bullets are shot and the enemy is coming closer? No. He cannot hear. Can a man who is dumb explain himself to those who have hearings? No, it's not possible. Therefore, until and unless you put on the same heart, the same mind, the same heart, I'm talking about heart here, not cap, here, and the same mind, the same concept, the same understanding that I am the only one available for the Lord and I'm remaining. I'm the only remaining among the prophets. You will not enter into the Elijah operation. For you to be able to enter in the realm of power, you must have the same heart that there's no one except me. And if each individual have such heart and such mind, it means that each individual will step into the realm of Elijah. Regardless of the fact that God has 7,000 more prophets, that man took it upon himself to confront the biggest enemy and the biggest threat of the nation because he has a different heart. That is only I who remain. And God will want me to tell you this, that in this conference, nobody should come to this conference like you're just going to a church service. Don't do that. Your attitude towards church will change from this hour forever. Believe what I tell you. This place is filled with cherubs. Some of you might have seen, some of you might have felt. Every senses that God created into man, your five senses, do you think it is just for your physical alone? No. Those five senses force for the spiritual. To the one who created it, God created senses to man, in man, for him first. Affection that God gave you, he gave you so that he can have you for him first. That's why he says, when he gave you the greatest law, he says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God first of all with all thy heart. He didn't say thou shalt love your neighbor first. He said thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. What he's talking about, senses, all your senses, your sense of sight, your sense of feeling, your sense of taste, your sense of touch, every sense that God has given you. Love the Lord your God. When you come before God, break yourself down. Unveil yourself of who you are because we are nothing before his holiness. Let your heart link unto him who is able to speak and the earth opens his mouth and swallows some people. He who is able to speak out of the mouth of a man and fire fell from heaven and consumed some people. Who is able to speak to the eyes of a man who was blind, born blind and the sight was restored. You must adopt that heart. Where did you get it from? From the Lord Jesus. And that's the reason why this night program is called Encounter with Jesus Christ. Encounter with Jesus Christ means when you encounter somebody, you become like him. Not just for him to heal you because he told us, he told us during this week, last week when you were leading prayers, Let me show you a few things that the Lord said to us during the prayers. During the prayers. He said to us in Isaiah 51 first. Look at Isaiah chapter 51. This is what God said he would do this week. This night is for me to prepare your heart and then we'll move. You You have seen a little shift in the morning. The topic I've been teaching you, I've taught you a number of times in the morning on high impact leadership and also on... 21st century leadership, I taught you again 
But what you had today, you've never had it from me. Why? Because the Spirit of God takes man from one realm to the other. I myself was hearing myself as I was speaking out of my lips because there are not things, analysis and analogies that were used by the Holy Spirit. I did not write it down out of the I formulated it. And when I was explaining to you from academic principle about high impact leadership factors and the Holy Spirit began to speak into my spirit about the difference between Adam, one of the major difference between Adam and, and, and Jesus Christ. In the sense of high impact leadership, Adam came, I repeat it again now, Adam came, he was given palace into the palace of God. And God said, have dominion. But what is the focus? What is his focus? Jesus came and said, I did not come for myself. I was sent by the Father. And he says, my job, my duty is that after I have finished my work, I have a home to go. I have a heaven to return. And everyone who believes in me, will, I will come back again and I will bring them with me. That's a man with focus. His focus is not just earthly. Like Adam's focus was earthly. His focus was eternal. His focus was futuristic. And because of that, all the operations of Jehovah will go tomorrow into the, into the seminar. I will now begin to help you to so know. See, look at the, the parallel between Christ and all the academics that people have said. The reason why Satan could not deceive him was because he knows that there is a better place for him. And Hebrew talked about that, isn't it? To the men of faith, they were looking for a, to a country that is what their anchor was. That is not built. The architect is not man. And because that is the concept they have, they were able to go through the sword. When they, when they threatened to, to cut them into two, they did not fear. They were sword. Some of them were sword. The Bible says that in the book of Hebrew 11, and you read it. Some of them were, were, were thrown into lions that lions should tear them. And they were, not, they, were, they were not afraid. They did not run away from lions. Because they were looking for a country... And every believer should know this. That should be the anchor of your soul. It should be the anchor of your soul. That before you die, you will be the walking Jesus on the streets of your city, on the streets of your nation. That should be the heart of every Christian. And this is what God is dealing with in this very meeting. Let me say this to you. The Lord gave us prophetic word from the book of Isaiah 51. And he says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness. Do you pursue righteousness? Say amen. amen. He says, who seek the Lord? Do you seek the Lord? Say amen. amen. 342 days today we are seeking God. There are 341 days. We are seeking the Lord. We have been praying together daily. And so if this scripture applies to anybody, it is us too. He says, look to the rock from which you were hewn. And that rock is who? Jesus. Let that be your focus. Something is about to shift on earth. I don't want anyone who is under me to miss out with it, in it. A difference is about to be made. It's not according to your ordination. It's according to your commission. According to your heart to God. If you have an ordination and you cannot function, certainly others who function will replace you. I don't want to be replaced. I don't want to be the least among the apostles on earth. And because I have such a, therefore, my aim is to be like the, the main apostle, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that should be your heart too. He says, don't you see God? He said, look at the rock. Let the rock be your focus from where you were hewn. And he says, and the quarry from where you were you were hewn, the rock from where you were caught, and the quarry from where you were hewn, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. He said, look at Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. Look at them. They walk with God in faith. God promised them that they would be father and mother of nations, and God gave them only one child, and yet they believed. What is happening to you that you are doubting God for? Doubt comes from the devil to enslave human beings. I can say Satan is a shadow. It's, it's, it is a mirage. 
The substance is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would the Bible say to look to Abraham? God said, I will make you father of nations, he believed. And he believed till he died. And he believed that that nation is in his son Isaac. And he has faith throughout. And God said, okay, give me that nation that I gave to you. And he took that boy to slaughter the boy because the God who said, take, said, give it to me. And the book of Hebrew explains to us, Abraham did that because Abraham believed that God can raise the dead. No bed had been raised in his time. He believed that God can raise the dead. If I sacrifice this child, God is able to make the child reach home after I have buried him here. God is able to make him sit down be waiting for me at home. That when I get home, this is the son I sacrifice. If it happened that way, he will never be afraid because he is in his con con contemplation. The book of Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew. What limits your mind? God wants to deal with it. Your mind must not be limited by any circumstances. You are talking about Jesus Christ, the son of the most high God. That is the one that you have accepted. Come on, let me tell you something. It's not according to your work. It's not according to your fasting. It is according to the ordination of the eternal one who lives forever and ever. The God who cannot lie. He has said, you are my sons forever. As many who believed in him, God gave them the power to be called children of God. That is it. Children not born of human thoughts or human agreement, but born of God, says the Spirit of the Most High. So believe it, and that is it. That is it. Remember, you have been cleansed by the blood. You have been purified by the Holy Spirit. And he says, furthermore, when I called him, he was but one. And I blessed him and made him many. You will be blessed by God and you will be many by God. Look at Christ with Tabernacle. A number of you on the, on the, on the so Sunday, I will ask when you join Christ with Tabernacle. Christ with Tabernacle is just like Israel. I would together now. Those who left Egypt, just counting men is about 600,000, not counting children and women. But the men who entered Canaan were about 3 million. And among the 600,000, it's only two that was in the 3 million. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you look at the life of <coughs> the, apost uh, the, 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 the people of Israel, you can see the replica in the life of Christ's faith, Tabernacle, but we got there. We got there. We got there. And you are part of it. If you are part of it, therefore, you are the carrier of the unction. You are the carrier of the covenant. It is not Apostle Williams, but you. Apostle Williams was only sent to come and show you what you can do. So that you can do what I'm doing and go beyond. You have the capacity to do it. The same Jesus in me is in you. The same truth I have, you have it. The same knowledge I have, you have it. And you also have your own knowledge that the Holy Ghost gave you. Come on now. You are a better advantage than I. We have to make up our mind that enough of mediocrity before God. I want to manifest now, not tomorrow. Because awaiting you this week is blessing. He says, when I called him, uh, he was one, he was one, he was one. And I would bless him and made him what many. God will give you the strength of a thousand. Because he said, the least of you shall be a thousand and the smallest a mighty, not just nation. A mighty nation. Mighty nation is inside you. Plenty is inside you. Abundance is inside you. How do you release it? Connect your heart with the heart of the master Jesus Christ and you begin to manifest it. And this is what this conference is about. It's about you. It's about you. It says in verse 3, this is prophetic, the Lord will comfort you. I said the Lord will comfort you. I said the Lord will comfort you. He will comfort Christ with the Banaku right now in this week. That is what it says. For the Lord will comfort Zion and will look with compassion on her ruin. My God will look in compassion at your ruin. He will look in compassion at your family. He will look in compassion at your body. God will be roused up in this very week to fulfill that which he has promised. And I will tell you that as we finish this. 
Then he says, he will make your desert like Eden. And I say to you in this week, your desert will turn to Eden. I say the barrenness of your life shall be gone forever. Anywhere that is desert, hear the word of the Lord. God told us in this house, from this week, you will turn to Eden. And so I command the desert to become Eden in the name of the Lord of hosts. This is what the Lord has said. He says, your wasteland shall be garden of the Lord. I say all your wasteland shall be garden of the Lord. Everywhere you have labored and you did not have any results. In this work, this very week, you will have results where you did not labor. That is what he's saying. He will make your desert like hidden. He will make your wasteland like the garden of the Lord. A place of all provision. He will make this house as he has said to us in this week. Do you know something I love so much? He says, joy and gladness will be found in you. Oh, Christ with tabernacle. Joy and gladness. The, the, the song of rejoicing. Look at the cherries of God that the assigned God has signed to this meeting. Look at the seraphs coming out. Look at the angels that God has signed to this meeting. In this very week, it shall come to pass over you, Christ with tabernacle, that joy and gladness shall be found in you. Joy and gladness shall be found in every house. It shall be found in every life. The impossibility of your life shall be made possible. The Lord will arise in the mighty power. He will fulfill that which I promise you. Men might have mocked you saying, where is your God? God will put an end to their mockery. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will be singled out among your colleagues. And I tell you, watch it. Some of you will go to the office tomorrow and what I'm saying will begin to happen to you. you you'll be singled out among your businesses. Some of you will reach your business tomorrow and you'll be surprised what God has done. You will be singled out among many because the unction that came today, I tell you something, you only need to see me. The Lord open your eyes in your dreams that you may understand what I'm saying. Joy and gladness will be found in you. Thanksgiving and sound of singing. Quite understand. I will not come to you until you have praised God until 30 minutes. That is, if you start service at 7, you will not expect apostle to interrupt you until 7.30. You will dance the dance you have never danced before. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, hey. The dead part of your organ shall come to life again. Those who have been having memory loss, you will recognize this. God does not forget. Your memory has been restored back. Yes. Yes. Agility. Paradosi ki paramata. He says, Thanksgiving and the sound of singing shall be found in you. Thanksgiving and the sound of singing shall be found in you. If I go further down, he says, hear me. Verse 7, hear me, you who know what is right. Is that not us? You people who have my law in your heart, that is us. God says, listen to him. All right? Do not fear the reproach of men anymore. If any one of you have been afraid of men, stop it. If any man threatens you, don't just ignore them. Don't reply them. If anybody promises you doom and they are in the position of power, you shut your mouth. Don't, don't take it to be reasonable because you will come the next day and the person is no more in power if you do what I'm telling you. But if you try to respond, it means you do not understand who put that person there and who allocated the power, who lives inside you. The one who lives inside you is the one that gave breath of life to every mortal man. So when a mortal man boasts before you, just ignore them. You ignore them because a, a man sensible cannot reply the words of a madman who is a fool. If a madman is abusing you and you are replying him that I'm not so, it means that you have joined the company of them. That will not be your portion. Listen to me with your heart. It says... Do not fear the reproach of men or be terrified by their insults. The name they call you, don't give reply. Don't, mean, don't let it mean anything to you because you are not that. You are what God says you are, not what men say you are. Somebody may not have confidence in you. Have confidence in yourself. I will talk about that during this week. Why did God say this? In verse 8, he says, for mouth we eat them up like a garment. 
The worms will devour them like wool. But my righteousness, my righteousness, my righteousness, says the Lord. I say God's righteousness, the Jehovah, said the king, he shall remain with you forever. He shall not depart from you while you are on earth. When you leave your body and enter to the realm of the spirit, you enter into the avalanche of it. You will be surrounded by it. It is the mouth of the Lord that has spoken. He will be forever and my salvation through all generations. You will not give back to children that will go to hell. All your children, your grandchildren, your generation to come because of your faithfulness, whatever the devil plans, they will enter heaven. Rejoice. Don't worry about that. If you have a child that is just messing about, don't worry. The days are over. God has expiry day for every activity under heaven. God will put an end to the activity of Satan in your family. He will put an end to the activity of Satan in your life. He will put an end to the activity of Satan in your destiny. As he has spoken, the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Let me tell you that salvation will never cease in your home because you have disconnected from your family tree and you have joined your umbilical cord with Jesus Christ of Nazareth so everyone you give battle they belong to him by force by fire they will preach the gospel by force by fire hear my word do not let your heart be troubled they will come back one after the other they belong to God they came out of the loin of a saint of God angels of God are with them wherever they go waiting for the instruction they will bring them back home salvation will not depart from your generation why should Christians worry? When you have a God who sees everything, stand up on your feet. You are going to lift up your voice to God and just thank God for this hour. Lift up your voice and thank God for all the promises God has spoken to us in this meeting. Rantabo Let your heart rejoice in what you have heard. Ye mesupe, ripamoso pandesi. Ha ha. Let your heart rejoice. Salvation will not depart from your generations. Once we eat the mouth of those who talk against you, your life will outstand them by what God is doing among you. By the end that God, by when God will finish with you by the end of this week, those who have known you before will be shocked. Though you have experienced a level of blessing, you are going to the abundance of blessing. The Bible says from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing and then the other. This is about that man, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All what you want to say is thank you. You just want to thank God this hour. Nanda Saraka Branda Basha. If you are just joining on, I'm telling I've, I've, I've already laid a table for you. Enter into the abundance of God that He has given tonight. Green to Musapa Brodish Karadi. We will not give back to a child doomed. Sambaroti Sata. He said, My spirit upon you and my word in your mouth shall not depart from you, neither will it depart from your children or your ancestors. Saramaradabarada. Give God the praise who lives forever and ever. Give Give God the praise who live forever and ever. Give God the praise who live forever and ever. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Put on the word on the board for me. Lord, I come into your, into your. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is the song you will sing and I'll close the meeting. Watch the words of the song you are singing.
years of 1984 and 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven on various occasions where he was shown global events that would lead up to the year of 2015. And in 1999, the Apostle was powerfully shown the coming calendar for the world. I want you to understand that the first war was in heaven, the first victory was in heaven, and it takes the man of heaven to win the earthly battle. In December 2009, God instructed Apostle Alfred Williams to go into all the world and let them know that I am coming. Beloved, with this powerful instruction behind us, it is now time for us to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Now is the time for the final preparation of the Bride of Christ. A final trumpet call to righteousness in this time that is running out before the rapture of the church. Join us on this dynamic campaign to reach every house in Britain. They need to hear the call. Who will tell them if we do not? This is the prophesied time of harvest. It is now time for us to win every house for Jesus. For more information, call 020 7635 0447 or visit cftchurches.org. The time has come to arise, shine and win every house for Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon.